My name's Carol and this is Hummingbird Spot. I'm here at Casa de San Pedro in Hereford, Arizona with Sherry L. Williamson, Tom Wood, and people that have gathered here to go on a river walk. These people are trying to turn me into a <laughs> regular birder, so let's see what happens. We keep working on it. We began by walking the grounds at Casa de San Pedro and then ventured onto the path that led down to the river. Whoa, 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 oh, oh my, look at that, look at that. Just zooming whoa. in. Whoa. We saw many birds, including a phenopepla, summer tanager, blue grosbeak, willow flycatcher, and I loved seeing the gambles quail. I used to have quail when I lived up in the Sierras, and I really miss seeing them running around. Another great sighting was a gray hawk perched high up in a tree surveying the territory. But afterwards, it was time for the hummingbird banding. Okay, we're from the Southeast Arizona Bird Observatory, and we're going to be doing hummingbird banding this afternoon. This is a project that we have been doing for over 20 years now. We've been banding here on the river for 27 years, and these long-term banding projects are really important. And by banding, what I mean, we're going to, hopefully, catch some birds today and put a small aluminum band on them. Not one this size, this is one that would go on a crane or a uh, swan or something like that. You couldn't put one like this on an eagle because the eagle would just reach down and pry it off. They have special bands for them. But this is one that would go on a, a, a very big bird. Our bands are so tiny that they send them to us uh, as a flat sheet of aluminum with numbers on them. This is a hundred bands and then Sherry has to make and form each individual band. And we've banded over 10,000 hummingbirds over the last 20 some odd years. So that's 10,000 little bracelets that Sherry, the jewelry, jewelry maker, has made. <laughs> I'll pass around our little felt friend here. And you can see he's got a band on his leg. And it gives you an idea of the relative size of the band. It's probably, uh, it's not going to impact their ability to fly and all that. It's the equivalent of us wearing a wristwatch. So they're so light we can't even weigh them with the equipment that we have, but uh, uh, we can weigh a hundred and extrapolate from there. And again, it's like wearing a wristwatch. This time of year, the migrants have already passed through, so we're down to our resident birds, and we've been doing this a long time. I, I generally say this time of year, the birds we catch, I expect them to already be wearing a band. More than half the birds uh, we catch this time of year are already wearing a band. But last week, we only caught three birds, but none of them were banded, so I'm not sure where they came from. Uh, we can kind of tell the banded birds just by their behavior around the trap. They're smart little guys, and if they've gone through that once before, not that it's so traumatic, but they know the ropes, and they'll come up to the trap and hesitate a bit, so we had to take the other feeders down to kind of encourage them to come. So we've got some birds around, not a lot right now, but I suspect we'll catch three or four. Uh, we look for pollen on the beak, that tells us what plants the, the, the uh, birds are feeding on. We look for the fat level, uh, particularly in migration, that tells us how much fuel they have in the tank for migration. We look for parasites, and that sounds kind of creepy, but the parasites that hummingbirds have are not going to crawl off on you. In fact, if the parasite that a black chinned hummingbird has won't even crawl off on a broad-billed hummingbird. They are species specific, a little feather lice that live on these hummingbirds. And normally a hummingbird is pretty good about grooming those off. If we see evidence of a lot of parasites on the bird, that's an indication they're under a lot of stress. And we're seeing that this year. It's no surprise everybody's under a lot of stress. Because of the drought, there's not many wildflowers out there. There's not many insects out there. Uh, it's been a really hard time. And in fact, the hummingbird numbers are down over what we have experienced in past years. And that's something, oh, we got a bird. Yeah, I was walking by the gateway and Larry and I went in and got it. All right. <laughs> so we've got a female black chin here. That's probably the most common bird we catch. She's a naive bird. She'd never been through okay. this before. Okay. And we're going to die out of fear. Not out of fear. No. Mm -mm. They're really, they're really tough little birds. Um, the. Uh, Sherry, we want to give you the That's, mic? That's, oh yeah. It's all right, it's all right. Okay. Um, it's actually much easier to handle hummingbirds than it is a lot of other birds because a lot of other birds just don't have 
the intellect to be able to process what's happening to them. And they do get really, really stressed out and just will sometimes go into seizures um, and just heal over from the stress of it all. And that's even true of birds we think of as big and brave and bold like raptors. Some raptors are really delicate creatures. Uh, and we could not have, you know, large numbers of the public standing around if we were banding raptors because of how sensitive they are. All right, so her band number is going to be M74171. The M on the front of the band number stands for four additional numbers because normal bird bands have nine numbers, a four-digit prefix, and then five numbers. And you just can't fit that many numbers on a band this small. So she stopped. I'm holding her wings down, but only very, very gently. I'm just keeping her wings from flapping so that she doesn't damage her feathers or waste energy. And right now she's just sort of playing possum. She's figuring if, 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 if she can lay still enough for long enough, this predator that has a hold of her might lose interest and, and relax its grip and she can get away. And of course she will get away. Okay, ma'am. Oh, lovely, 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 lovely. Okay, tail feather out of alignment there. Yeah, she's already had a, an encounter or two with a predator. She's got missing tail feathers uh, from where she, it could have been a fight with another hummingbird, but more likely she had a close escape with a predator. And what would be a predator? Oh, gosh. Almost anything that eats small birds or large insects is going to go for a hummingbird if they're hungry enough. The adult hummingbirds are good at getting away. Um, hang on here. I didn't zero mine. Oh, there we go. Okay, now. Yeah should get a more reasonable number now. 20.5, that's millimeters, that's less than an inch. Wing is 47.4, dash for the tail length, R5 is P. Female black chins, adult females, and juvenile males have a triangular shaped white tip on the outer tail feathers. And uh, this is just one little thing that we note just to make sure that we have identified this bird by age and sex and species appropriately. So how old is she? It's hard to know. She's a minimum of a year old. Oh, wow. but, but beyond that, we can't really tell. Grooves are none. Grooves are little wrinkles in the bill where the bill is still young and growing. And we're not seeing much of that this time of year because we don't have very many successful nests yet this year. We're still hoping. Uh, buff is slight. Her back is, wow, 90% um, fresh. She has a few little worn feathers on her rump and a few little bluish old feathers on her back. But G count is the pattern of, of on, on adult males and females of species that have throat iridescence. Uh, the, what we use uh, the, for the G count is the number of iridescent feathers or the coverage of iridescent feathers on the throat. But on female black chins, we have a special category for, for them because they sometimes have little streaks or dots of dark on their throat. And she is an M equals one. I mean, she has little tiny fine black um, lines down the middle of each feather. G par is none, that's the parasite. So she doesn't have any visible parasites. Doesn't mean she doesn't have some parasites. Just means that she doesn't have any visible ones. She doesn't have the large ones that live up under their throat feathers that are, are the easiest ones for us to evaluate. Okay, she's peeing a little bit here. I need to. There we go. Okay. Molt is none. Fat is slight. Breeding is zero T. And pollen is none. So she, zero T is a, a, just a normal little abdomen and a tight little vent, uh, indicating that th there hasn't been a very large object passed through it very recently. The eggs are fairly huge in proportion to the female's body size, so. She is 3.6 grams, which is a respectable weight for a female black gen. Her crop was empty, by the way. So uh, there's not a lot of this weight that is liquid weight up in her crop from recently drinking, but she, uh, uh, I mean, they drink so much, she probably still has liquid in her crop from, or liquid in her belly from a previous encounter with the feeder. There we go. Okay. All righty.
After the hummingbird is banded and examined, it is offered a drink and then released. Sherry answered everyone's questions about hummingbirds, her research, and her book, The Field Guide to Hummingbirds of North America. And we have wonderful news. Sherry Williamson is going to collaborate with Hummingbird Spot on some videos that will answer many questions we all have about these wonderful creatures. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of this.